Hey everybody, it's Christine at Ziedman Development and today I'd like to walk you through what you can do with a solicitor or canvasser data destination in Importacular. So first and foremost, um, as you can tell by my accent, I am based in the US and I am most comfortable and most familiar with the term solicitor. So I'm going to stick with that today just so I don't confuse myself. But for our friends in the UK or in other places that would use Canvasser, please forgive me and just in, in your brain in, interpret Canvasser when I say solicitor. So thank you for bearing with me on that. So first of all, I want to mention that this is not a tutorial to tell you how to do all of the things I'm mentioning. Today's video is really about telling you theoretically broad strokes, what can you do? What do you get when you buy this data destination? And what functionality in this data destination makes it different from being able to do an import in Razor's Edge, which everyone has access to? So that's where we're going to go today. So the first thing I actually want to mention is working with our criteria sets. And I know the criteria sets are not specific to the solicitor data destination, but they do work with it. And they help you pre prevent duplicate records with every destination. And when you're working with the solicitor data destination, you're working with two separate constituents in your import. You're working with the constituent on your primary constituent tab. So that would be over here. That may be your donor, that may be a prospect, whoever you're linking the solicitor to. That's one constituent. Solicitor here is your second constituent. So our criteria sets are really important with this because we're matching not one, but two constituents to the razor's edge. So just a quick look at my individual constituent criteria sets. Just a reminder, I can, you can customize these, you can add to them, you can take away from them, you can add more levels. These criteria sets help you decide how the data in your import is going to match to the data in the Razor's Edge. So tons of functionality here that you cannot get in a Razor's Edge import. Lots of customization. If you haven't looked into this, I highly recommend you read our documentation because there's so much you can do here to avoid duplicates. It's really great, really great functionality. So that said, the next piece that I do want to mention is the fact that within our template, we can import our primary constituent and our solicitor and even a gift with the solicitor linked to it or an action with the solicitor linked to it or a proposal with the solicitor linked to it all in one import. So if you're using a Razor's Edge import, you're going to have to do that in some layers because you can't create all of those at the same time. So that requires you to work with specific import IDs, keep everything straight, make sure you've linked it all together and make sure that you have enough of that detail together so that you can create all of those links. With Importacular, you don't need to do that. So you can see here, I do have a constituent set up here on my primary tab. I have my solicitor set up here. I have a relationship set up between my solicitor and my constituent. That's what this record is. I also have a gift and I've linked my solicitor to that gift. So when I'm done with this import, I can click import and I can add all of those things at the same time. Additionally, if you have the other paid destinations to do this, you could add an action linked to a solicitor. You could also add a proposal and link it to a solicitor. So you can add all of those combinations in one template, in one import. So tons of functionality available for you there. Another thing that you can do with this data destination is in addition to adding those new solicitors, you can also update existing solicitor relationships at the same time. So here you can see we've got that mapping for our relationship. Just gonna show you quickly what I have there. So I've added a date and I've added a solicitor type. I could add notes, I could add a fund ID, an amount, any of those things that I want on my solicitor relationship. But what's really helpful in making sure we update are these area settings. So the area settings allow me to determine, first of all, what counts as a match between this solicitor relationship. So is it just based on the relationship between these two constituents? Is it also based on the type? Is it also based on the date to, the date from? So that's what these middle checkboxes allow me to do. The top check, the top radio buttons, I'm sorry, allow me to decide what to do 
if it matches. So I can add the new solicitor anyway. So maybe I want to see this solicitor relationships over and over. Maybe that's my internal policy. I can do that. And that way I would see all of the relationships. Maybe I only want to add new solicitors and I want to update the existing. That would allow me to have the middle one. The last one allows me to set a default to always update the solicitor. And then finally, last but not least, I have an option to only add or update solicitor relationships if my constituent record is new or existing. Now that's not referring to the solicitor as a new or existing, that's referring to the primary constituent. So if I wanted to only add solicitors to new constituents to the razor's edge, just uncheck that box and that's gonna suppress these solicitor relationships for all of my existing constituent records that I'm importing. So tons of things I can do there to customize who gets this information, where it goes in the razor's edge, and what happens when records are new or ex existing in the razor edge? I hope that this has been helpful for you in getting an overview of what can be done with this data destination. If you have any questions, as always, please reach out to our team. Happy to help walk through specific data questions that you have. Happy to talk to you about the functionality and answer your questions and see if this is the right fit for you. Thank you for joining me today, and I hope you have a great day.